This is TTELT, Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. I'm Dr. Dina Rhodes. Let's get started. Before we start on this week's topic, I would first like to remind you that we are encouraging everyone to turn in their impact videos this month because it's going to help us with our next fundraiser. And what we would really love for all of you who have been impacted by TTELT to do is to provide us just a one minute video about um, anything that you have learned from TTLT. Um, it doesn't have to be high quality or anything. You can just record it on your phone. You can um, do a Facebook video, just um, post it on Facebook in our TTLT Facebook group, or you can put it on the Rose Education Foundation page, or you can email it to us at TTLT info. Any, however you like, we're really being flexible. We're going to take all of these amazing videos that you guys are creating. We've already had some really good ones, but we would love to have some really great videos. And we're going to create a whole montage of videos um, that we're going to show at our fundraiser to help the donors see how TTLT is helping teachers around the world. So we would love to have so many of your voices. Uh, so as I was saying, so just one minute long, it doesn't, it's um, just choose one thing that has helped you become a more independent teacher. So don't forget to tell us about your name, uh, where you are from, your country or the city in the country that you are from, and preferably also tell us what level of English you are teaching and then answer the question of how TTLT has helped you become a more independent teacher. So we're gonna have a whole independent theme uh, for our July fundraiser. So we hope that you will um, help us and you will participate by creating your short video in however way you like. Just tell us, um, give us an example of how TTLT has impacted your teaching. And there are, there's an example that Eileen made um, that's uh, in our TTLT Facebook group. So if you're not sure what to do, go to our Facebook page and check it out. This week on TTLT, I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favorite games and apps that I play with my students, and it's uh, called Goose Chase. So we're going to do Engaging with Goose Chase this week. Let's get started. Okay. You might be asking, Goose Chase, what is Goose Chase? Well, it's a digital scavenger hunt app that your students use, and you use your computer to create the game, and then your students use their app, and they have so much fun. My students said this was one of their favorite things that they did. So uh, hopefully you have, if you haven't already tried it, you will try it with your students. So it helps your students bond, and it provides informal assessment and language practice. So it gives them more incentives to practice the language in and outside of class, it's so fun. And as I said, it's a fun way to engage your students. So your students are using the language in a really, really engaging way. So if you haven't already, go to goosechase.com to create your free account. It's free. Okay, um, let me start today. Um, when we do the workshop, we'll play one of these games. So, um, but um, today we are just uh, going to um, talk about it. So I do hope that you'll come to my workshops on May 27th and 29th. But um, we're going to start by uh, talking about one of the games that I did at the beginning of one of my online classes. So this is how I used it online. But when I first used um, Goose Chase, I did it in, in classroom. But um, we're gonna talk about um, how I used it online. So what I do first is I um, have the students download the app on their phone and we do a little introductory game. So this game, we spent about 30 minutes of class time doing this one. So um, they have several missions in each game. And for the first mission, uh, it's called Breakfast of Champions. And it says to take a photo or make a video of a box of cereal in your home and make a sentence about the cereal using countable or uncountable nouns correctly. So remember, um, I'm, 
I'm trying to encourage my students to um, practice their English. And this is something that we had recently been talking about in class, countable and uncountable nouns. So I'm trying to get them to remember to use the things that they've just been practicing. And the second one, you can, a lot of times they, um, they love it because they get to take pictures and videos of each other, but um, you can also have them write. So for this one, I asked them to write the three parts of an essay. So we had been practicing essay writing. So I asked them to write the three parts of an essay. And you'll notice that I even gave them bonus points for the four parts of an introduction. So we had been watching some videos and talking about all of this in class. And so um, we, I think uh, we, they learned the four parts from Ingvid, okay? But we uh, were um, doing all sorts of things about essay writing in class. And so um, I was trying to get them to think back about all of these things that they learned, okay? The next one's called Get Stuffed, okay? And they're supposed to take a video of a teammate explaining the difference between some and any to a stuffed animal. So they have to have a stuffed animal in their um, video and they're explaining the difference between some and any. So again, this is something that we have already talked about in class. So it's getting them to review something they've already learned. And of course it says bonus, bonus points for each stuffed animal and each team member in the video. So if you can get more team members in, and that's a challenge uh, when they're in breakout rooms, but it can be done. <laughs> um, the next one is a grammar chat. So I asked them to take a video of a teammate saying a sentence that starts with, I wonder. Hmm. So again, they're practicing a grammar point that they recently learned. Uh, here's one that's just for fun. Take a video of a team member singing a song in English. And it says bonus points for each team member in the video. So if they can get more of their team members in the video, and again, this is a challenge in breakout rooms, but it can, can work, all right? And then shop talk was one where they were um, uh, talking about where they like to shop. And so taking a video of that. And the last one that is here, wait, I had a few others for them to choose from, is to do air guitar. So they were um, practicing air guitar. And this one was just for fun and uh, uh, didn't have a grammar point uh, focused on it. But And then it says uh, bonus points if they um, can say a sentence about their favorite rock band. So it's, all of these are for fun and um, they get to choose which one of them they want to do. None of them are required. They're just doing it for fun and they're competing against other teams in the class. So fun. Okay, um, and now this is an example of one of the games that I played with my students in Melbourne before the pandemic. So they went out, this is something that they did outside of the classroom. So I did do with these students, I also did an introductory one in the class so they could learn about what they could do with the app. Um, but then I gave them this one and uh, they had several weeks to play this game and um, they could go out after class, they um, would get together with their team and decide what points they wanted to get. So what, which of the missions they wanted to do in order to get the points. Um, and of course, this is Australia. So um, one of the things that they wanted to do was to go to some of the museums, learn more about some of the local culture. Because most of my students in this class, most of them were from China. There were a couple of other countries represented, but the majority of the students were from China, but everyone was from a different country. We had some from Thailand and some from Malaysia, but they were all from other countries. So they wanted to learn more about Australia. And one thing that they were interested in was Aboriginal culture. So in order to help them, uh, encourage them to do something that they told me they already wanted to do, I gave them points for going to the um, Aboriginal museum that was very close to the um, university where we were and um, take a video of a team member asking the question at the center. So, and of course they would get five bonus points if they would write a review about it, okay? And they would get a point for each member, each team member that was in the video. So they could get points in so many different ways just for going to a museum that they told me they already wanted to go to. 
All right, eating local. This is another thing that my students said that they wanted to do was to go into restaurants, talk to people in restaurants, order food, all of this. So I told them to take a video of a team member asking a question in a pub or restaurant. And I said to they would get bonus points for each team member that they could get in the video. Okay, and the videos are very short for um, Goose Chase. So you, it's, it's a challenge to get as many people in as possible. <laughs> but they have love, they love doing this one. Everybody got help of this, these points. Okay, and um, Halloween party fun. So this game um, took place during Halloween. And so our school was um, having a Halloween party. And sometimes the students go to these parties, sometimes they don't. But I told them, you know, if you go to this party, you're going to get five points. And there were also, I had lots of other things that they could do at this party because I had read all of the things that were going to happen. So they, they could get as many as 20 points just from attending this party. So guess what? All of my students went to the party. So again, I'm encouraging my students to do things that I know are good for them, a good way for them to practice the language, a good way for them to learn more about the culture, my culture, not so much Australian culture, but um, something that's becoming more about Australian culture. But um, they were uh, learning more about the, the language. So it says for this one, it says, make a video of a team member asking a question about Halloween to a non-Chinese person at the party. So they had to find someone that was not a Chinese classmate <laughs> to talk uh, in English uh, about um, about Halloween. So someone who knew um, more about Halloween than them, yeah? And it says, if you and, your, and the person you asked the question to are in costume, you get bonus points, okay? Um, and then we had a language learning center at our school as well. So um, I wanted to encourage them to attend the activities at the language learning center. So they got points if they went to a discussion group or if they attended the grammar chat. So um, there were lots of these different things that they could do. Um, and many, some of them went anyway. They didn't need to go with their team, but um, this was some of them were saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go to the grammar chat today. Do you guys want to come with me and we can get the point for the game? And so and they're like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll all go. We'll go to the grammar chat and we'll get the points. So again, I'm encouraging them to attend the things that they need to attend anyway, which is one of the things I loved about this game. And my students really loved it too. They said that they had a lot of fun. And here are some examples of the missions that my students achieve. So this is a, um, a video, you can't really see a lot, but this is a video of a student asking a question at a restaurant and you can see what they have eaten. Um, here's the students showing me that they attended the grammar chat. Um, here is the students practicing their speaking. Here's the students asking a question while they are shopping. Here's a student asking a question on the tram. Uh, here's another one of the students. One of their missions was to go to the library and um, ask about ask someone a question at the library. So these are students at the library, and um, this one is this one. My students told me that they liked this mission the most because it um, it gave them a reason to talk to the locals. And this is another thing that they told me they wanted to do. So they could say, "Oh, you know, we're doing this. We're playing this game for class." And they said they had a lovely conversation with a woman and her child in a park. So they, they stopped and asked her a couple of questions and that they, they said they learned a lot about her as an Australian and they really enjoyed that conversation. So again, I'm providing them incentives to do things that they say they want to do. So I'm just encouraging them to do this. And then the last one on here is a scary movie. So again, I had another other missions on there regarding Halloween. So they, um, if they watched a scary movie with their team, they could get points. So they got together and watched a scary movie and um, took a picture. <laughs> so fun. So um, we're going to talk a lot more about this in the workshop, but um, if you use Goose Chase with your classmates, your students, with your We're going to talk a lot more about this in the workshop, but um, if you use Goose Chase with your students, they will 
bond with your classmates and create more friendships. They will learn study skills in an engaging way. They will improve their ability to read instructions. This was one of the things that we were the most excited about when we first started using this because of course it has all of the instructions on each mission, but sometimes the students weren't paying attention to that and they were just kind of doing their own thing. But when I would talk to them about it in class, I would say, you didn't do the mission and I wouldn't give them the points or I would take off points. It's, um, you can do, you'll see when you play the game that you can um, subtract points or add bonus points um, when you are going through the game. So I would take off points. I was like, well, you didn't do the, you didn't follow the instructions. You didn't do what it says. And of course we know that following instructions is really important for our students in a lot of ways it could save their lives, but also when they're taking exams, if they don't follow the instructions, they could lose a lot of points during, during exams. So this really was helping them kind of understand the instructions and be able to read them. So this was one of the bonuses that we didn't anticipate um, we would have, but that was really effective and helped the students in a, in a way that we hadn't even thought about. It also will help your students be more likely to attend the activities and events that will improve their skills. So you, again, you're providing that incentive for them to do the things that they know they should do, but they might decide, ah, I'm too tired today or something. But they've got that team that's encouraging them to go and do the things that they know they should do. And it's also encouraging them to do more things and to get out there and get more involved. And you could probably think of many other reasons that you would want to use Goose Chase with your students. But these are a few of the, of the reasons that I used it with my students and it was a lot of fun. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about my top teaching tips. And we'll, again, we're going to talk more about these in the workshop, but I just want to go over some of the things. Some of these I've already talked about, but and I'll just emphasize and some that I haven't had a chance to talk about in this episode. Um, the important thing to do is to take time to ask your students what kinds of things they want to do to improve their English. So I took some time during class and I had them brainstorm in, the, in teams, different things that they want to do in English. And so that's why I'm saying like, I added their missions to the game, like the things they said they wanted to do. I made sure that those were in the game because I wanted to provide that incentive for them to do those things. All right. And another thing I learned the hard way is to give them more than one week to complete the missions. So um, one thing I learned was that I give them um, the missions. We talk about it in class. They go out, they have fun. And then they're like, oh, I wanted to do more, but we didn't have time. Or one time I stopped the game after one week and then I created a new game the next week. And they're like, wait, 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 what? no, no, no. We don't want a new game. We, we wanted to play that game longer, okay? And so instead of having a new game each week, um, I, what I learned to do was to add new missions each week to the game that they'd already started. So by adding these new missions, it would, um, it would create new incentives for them to go and do things that, um, that they hadn't done. So, um, so uh, they would, I would say, oh, okay, oh, we're doing Halloween this week. So I'm going to add some more missions about Halloween to the game. Or um, if you know that things are coming up and you want to stagger it, you can hide the mission so the students can't see it, but you've already got it on, on your version on your laptop. Um, so you can hide them and just um, uh, unhide them later when you want to show them that these new missions. And another thing that I learned was really effective is to check the missions in class each week um, and then apply the bonuses and penalties accordingly. So uh, again, for this, because I was help, it was helping them to learn to read the instructions each Friday, we would spend, I don't know, about 10 or 15 minutes looking at what they had done that week in, um, in the game. And I would say, oh, you, look, you've got one, two, three team members in the in the picture. That's great. I'll give you bonus points. Or I would read it. It's like, oh, this says you're supposed to write a sentence and nobody wrote a sentence. So I'm going to have to um, take off some points. I'm like, well, but if you, you know, if you add the sentence with, you know, before the game's over, of course I can add the points back. So they're like, oh, okay, we got to add the sentence or whatever it was that they didn't do. Um, they would They would try to correct it so that their team could get the points. 
And um, so those were all, um, some of the tips. And another thing to remember, some people are kind of surprised. And I was a little a little disappointed when I realized it too, but I, um, the free version only has three teams. And so I have three teams, wow. So that would be like 12 students, three teams of four, five, you know. But you know what? You can do a lot with three teams. I learned you have to be really creative but um, it's actually with three teams, you can have a lot of fun. And one thing that we did with it is um, the first few times you divide your own class into three different teams. But then if you have uh, a lot of um, classes going on in your school, you can have class competitions where you can have a team. If your class is one team, another class is a team, and then you have prizes between the three classes. So that can be a lot of fun too. There's so much you can do with this. Have fun with it. Be creative. Have a great time. So I would like you to think about how you would like to use Goose Chase with your students. And I would love for you to come to our workshop and bring your ideas to the workshop. And we're going to talk a lot more about Goose Chase. We'll play a game together and uh, learn more. So the... Um, the workshop for Goose Chase is going to be on Thursday, May 27th at 5.30 um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's New York time, 5.30 in the evening in New York. And Saturday, May 29th at 9.30 a.m. New York time. So 9.30 in the morning uh, in New York. So please um, check how that corresponds to your local time and join us for the Goose Chase workshop. Choose the one, it's the same workshop both times, so choose the one that fits the best into your schedule. And we also have another workshop coming up. Uh, even before mine, we have Pearlie, who's going to talk, talk to you and give you some really great tips on how to stay engaged virtually. So she'll be talking a lot about these things. And her workshop is Friday, May 21st at 5 p.m. New York time, Eastern Standard Time. And I am really excited that we're having another TTLT talk on Saturday, May 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll have my workshop in the morning and then we'll have the talk uh, in the evening on the same day. So 5 p.m. New York time is our next talk. And we had such a great talk at the last one. It was really engaging and, and interesting. And we really hope that you'll come to this one. Bring your questions, bring your ideas. We always start with our questions, but sometimes we go into very different tangent depending on the questions and the challenges that the teachers who come to the talk have. So come and um, give us your ideas for what you would like to talk about. And we might talk about it this month, or we might um, create that as the topic that we'll discuss next month in June. So always the last Saturday of the month, or almost always the last Saturday of the month, is TTLT Talks. So we do hope that we will see you there. Okay, and um, also we have Alma and Isabel giving their workshop on June 12th. I know that you've already, um, probably already listened to Alma's presentation. Uh, or I know that you have probably already listened to Alma's uh, interview and um, and gotten some great ideas from there. And Isabel's also doing uh, an episode. And we're going to, they are going to be together in a workshop on Saturday, June 12th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 4 p.m. New York time. All right. <laughs> Oh, and I just want to mention one last time about our impact video. So please, if you have a chance, uh, create your impact video. Um, you can, it doesn't have to be um, very sophisticated or anything. Just talk about the things that have helped you with um, TTLT. So please create your video and help us to share the things that you have learned from TTLT with possible donors. Thank you very much for taking the time to create the video and we really look forward to watching it. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.